Today we're delving into a topic that is often surrounded by fear and uncertainty, and that is death. As Catholics, our faith offers us a unique perspective on the end of our earthly journey and provides guidance on how we can prepare for a good death. Let's delve into this important aspect of our faith. This is a crucial topic because everybody, either you're rich or you're poor, famous or not, Catholic or atheist, we are all going to die. Either we like it or not, we are going to die. This video is not going to be about how to overcome the fear of death, no, but rather how to prepare for death and have a good death at the end of our lives. I believe that the fear of death, in some way, it's good. We have to have a healthy fear of death because being conscious that we're going to die is going to push us to better ourselves spiritually and repent of our sins. In the Catholic faith, death is not the end. It's a transition. We believe in the afterlife, and this belief shapes how we approach the inevitable. God wants us to share in the resurrection of Jesus, His Son, the guarantee of afterlife. One guiding concept is memento mori, which means remember your death. It's a powerful reminder of our mortality. And that takes us to the first step of handling the fear of death and preparing for it. And that is embracing it. Look, you will die. I'm sorry, but that's the hard truth. I'm gonna die, you're gonna die, everybody's gonna die. Once we accept it, the fear of death is going to vanish to a certain point. And sadly, there's people out there that live like if they're never going to die. They keep sinning, they keep doing bad things. And there's other type of people, especially the young, who say, no, 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 no. I don't have to worry about that right now. I'm barely 25. I'm barely 30. I'm barely 18. Alas, dear brethren, living until we're older, it's not promise there's people right now that yesterday were alive that were 18 25 28 years old that today are dead that's life my cousin it's an example of this he died at 19 years old 19 if he died we too could die so please don't think that you living until you're 70 80 90 it's a promise no and secondly please embrace it accept it because once we embrace that we're going to die, it's going to bring benefits such as living a virtuous life. And that is the second tip to have a good death and prepare for it. Live a virtuous life. To have a good death, you must be in communion with God. Our choices, our actions, and the way we treat others is important. As we prepare for the inevitable, reflecting on our lives and seeking the forgiveness of God, allows us to approach death with a clear conscience and a heart filled with love. No saint has ever feared death. Why? Because they live a virtuous life and they knew they did the necessary to receive the forgiveness of our Lord. I'm going to join St. John Bosco by saying, At the hour of death, you will regret having wasted so much time to your soul's detriment. Number three, sacraments. This is the most crucial aspect to have a good death. There is no good death without the sacraments. The sacraments of reconciliation, anointing of the sick, and Holy Communion play a vital role in providing spiritual strength and healing as we approach the end of our lives. Always seek the sacraments, especially if you or a loved one is sick. Sadly, there's people that always call the priest too late and sometimes the sick person doesn't get the sacraments because people wait until the last minute to call a priest for the sacrament of the anointing of the sick and holy communion or reconciliation. No, anointing of the sick, as it says in the name, sick. It's not necessary for people in their deathbed. No, it's for people that are sick. So don't wait until the last minute to call a priest. Thankfully, I have a lot of friends who are priests and they always tell me they wait until the last minute <laughs> and it's not like that. So please don't make that mistake. Number four, overcome your pridefulness. Look, I understand we all have people we dislike. I personally have people I dislike. 
I'm just playing. Not exactly like that. But please, don't hold a grudge. Learn to forgive, just as Jesus did with his persecutors. It's so dreadful to see family members hating themselves for not saying sorry or for not forgiving a family member that has just died. Please, don't be one of them. Learn to forgive. And even if that person was at fault and they're the one that made the mistake or they're the ones who offended you, whatever reason, learn to forgive. Just like in the Our Father, forgive us, Father, as we forgive those who offended us. So learn to forgive always and put your pridefulness to the side and overcome this pernicious sin. Remember, pridefulness, because of pridefulness, Lucifer, precious angel, turned to the worst of the worst creatures. Be careful with this pernicious sin. It's deadly. Number five, live in the moment. Why live in the moment? Well, my grandma just died a few days ago and I was talking with my aunts and my uncles and they were telling me how they regretted not living in the moment with their mom, not being present when they were having a conversation. And it's so dreadful to see this. It's so common also. I'm guilty of this too. My fam, my mom, she loves talking. She comes to me and I'm just like, yes, mommy, yes. Or I'm thinking about other things. Please, let's... Let us not be like that. Because one day, those family members will die. And we're going to regret it not having, not being present with them. So please, live in the moment with your family members especially. Love them and enjoy their company. Because one day, they will die too. And the last thing I want for you is to regret not spending time with them. Not living in the moment while you were with them. Not loving them. And there you have it, five tips to prepare for death as a Catholic. I totally understand that death is scary. I myself, I'm kind of scared. <laughs> but once you get to a level spiritually, you're not going to fear death anymore. You're going to be like the saints who even desire it. I remember so much the story of St. Teresa of Avila when she was young. She decided to go with her cousin to a city where they were killing Christians and she wanted to get killed because she wanted to be a martyr. Uh, this is incredible because once you, you are in a level like the saints spiritually, you're not going to be fearful of that, but you're going to desire it. And I hope that for you and for me too, that one day we could be at that level spiritually and not fear that. But remember, death is just a transition, like a bridge to eternal life. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much. And I love you.